Before we begin, a warning to our more sensitive viewers. Some surgical images in the following story are graphic and we advise viewer discretion. Embryo transfer has been used in New Zealand since the 1970s and has been instrumental in speeding up genetic gains in our national herds. A group of Hawke's Bay businesses are working together to provide a full embryo transplant service for cattle with world-class success. Embryo transfer is a method of getting more offspring out of your best cows. So we superovulate cows and we flush the embryos out and we might get an average of six embryos per cow that we flush. And then we put those embryos into recipient cows, surrogate mothers basically, and they might have three, four, five calves. We can flush the donor cow perhaps three, four, five times in a row. So in one season you might get 12, 16 calves instead of just one calf in a year. So that way you can get more genetic gain. So that's what we do. I, I do the flushing the cow, the, the collection of the embryos and the transfer of the embryos. And we have Ian Brown at our centre in Paki Paki. He programs the cows under my instruction and injects the cows to superovulate them. And then he helps me when we're collecting the embryos, flushing them. And normally on the centre, we freeze them either for later transfer or for export. And we export to various countries, Australia, Canada, the United States, Vanuatu recently. The embryos that we don't export, we freeze and the client either stores them for a while or we put them in up here at Kerry Nankivis' place. Now he runs a whole herd of recipient cattle. So Kerry prepares those cattle by programming them with a program that I supply and injecting them and putting cedars in them so that they all come on heat on a certain day or perhaps over two days depending on how many embryos we've got to put in. So seven days later I come along and we put the embryos in surgically. The reason it's seven days is that when we collect the embryos from the donor cows, they're seven days old. We wait seven days after the cow's been inseminated. That way the embryos have um, come down out of the fallopian tubes into the uterus. So they're actually, at that point, they're loose in the uterus. So when we um, rinse fluid in, we can just rinse them out. Cows come to me from all over New Zealand, really. Top cows from stud breeders. With cows from Northland to Chihuahua to Maru, and they come to me for collecting embryos. And I've just got to manage them right. Uh, uh, we need a good sound cow, really, and uh, they arrive and we start the starter program. Normally, when they come off a truck, we evaluate them more or less straight away. First job really is to settle them down after a trip, uh, make sure they're quiet. So I just handle them quietly for a couple of days, and then Mark will come in and evaluate them. For a successful flushing, well, it it's really comes back basically to the owner of the cow. She needs a sound, a sound cow with a background of high fertility and with no calving troubles. And um, she needs to have been calved down for at least two months and had a natural heat on the farm before she comes. Uh, Martin doesn't like starting the program before a natural heat and uh, we get better results for it. We've got uh, 1,100 acres in total with two farms. We usually just use this side, which is about 550 acres, for the recent job. The other side has commercial cows, calving cows. We buy the recipes in and blood test them, vaccinate them, drench them, tag them, and then program them to um, cycle on the right days. And then they're implanted here. And then 60 days later, the pregnant ones are put on a truck and sent off to whoever owns the embryo. The big plus for me in Hawke's Bay is that most of the recipes are gone by the end of February. So that's when it notoriously gets dry here. So a lot of stuff short term, shorter term, I bring them in starting about early September. And most of them are gone. The pregnant ones are gone by the end of February. If we have a donor cow from a client, we can control everything from the start to the finish. And, and all they get is the donor cow back when we finish with her and the pregnant recipient cows, you know, maybe half a dozen pregnant recipients from one round, but they all go back to the farm and we control everything up to there. We definitely get a better results by doing it all ourselves. Up here at Kerry Nankivis' place, we thaw and transfer embryos. So um, normally they're embryos we've already collected and frozen on the centre. However, we do occasionally collect embryos on the centre and bring them up here fresh, just in, in some media. In the case of thawing embryos, 
we come up here, we basically have prepared all those recipients so that they've been on heat a week earlier. And then usually the night before, I come up and I check each recipient and I rectally palpate them. So I check which ovary has ovulated. And what I'm looking for is a corpus luteum on the ovary. If I don't have one of those, then I reject her. And the next day we come up and the embryologist, she sets up and she starts thawing the embryos, which is a process normally where the embryos have to be put through a, a series of solutions under a microscope. And once she's finished that, she loads them into a, a little, actually it's a Tomcat catheter. And in the meantime, we're preparing the cows. So Ian Brown, who also runs the centre, he does the shaving, cleans the skin, does the local anaesthetic along the line of the cut that's going to happen. Once he's done that, the cow comes into the next crush and I just spray the skin again with some alcohol as a final sterilisation. And then I put a cut in the skin with a, with a spring-loaded scalpel device and then I move my hand through the muscle layers. Rather than cut the muscle layers, I separate the muscle layers and I get my hand right through each of the three muscle layers and then I break through the peritoneum, which is the lining of the inside of the abdomen. Once I do that, I, I reach in and I usually find the ovary first and then pick up the uterine horn, which is where I want to put the embryo. And once I've got that, I let Julie know and she comes out with the embryo. And I put a small hole with a little blunt wire in the uterus and then she hands me the um, catheter and I introduce that into the lumen, the inside of the uterus. And then she pushes the plunger, squirts the embryo in. Once we've done that, rather than stitch the skin to make things faster, we use some specially made um, stainless steel staples. So I just clamp them on and then I spray some antibiotic spray on it. Most of the time on farm, well all the time effectively on farm, I um, do non-surgical transfers because we can't be doing that sort of complicated surgery in a sort of on-farm situation. The facilities normally aren't, just aren't up to standard. And, you know, any complications we can't keep an eye on and uh, things like that. So I do it non-surgically. The reason we do surgical here is that we get a better pregnancy rate. We can do that here because the system we've got gets it through very quickly. So the cows aren't in there long, we get the embryo and they're out and it all works quite well. So effectively on farms, Normally we get a pregnancy rate of only really from frozen embryos 50 to 60 percent, maybe higher, but that's what it is. Here we get a pregnancy rate on average of 75 percent, although that does vary. I mean sometimes we get you know only 60 percent from some cows and then we get 80, 90 percent from other, from other donor cows. It's the embryos themselves that affect that. So but our average over a large number is about 75 percent pregnant. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.